just wanted to make a video today talking about this thing that I got literally 11 months ago. It is the Mr. Steel Edition Run Cam Swift Mini. And I'm here to tell you why you should not buy that. Or I'm not sure, honestly. Okay, let me just start off by saying I'm going to compare this to the absolute best camera I think there ever was on the market, which was the Micro Eagle. Um, I have a bunch of barbell editions. I'm gonna be comparing it to that. And then I also have a Runcam Swift 2, which is like a full size edition. And I figured since this is a Swift Mini, might as well take a look at this CCD camera. All right, but first we are going to unbox this thing a year later. Run cam, open it up, user manual, boom, right there, there's your link. Uh, nobody cares. All right, this is what you see. Obviously it's gonna have the lens protector on it um, and it's not gonna be covered in dirt and it's not going to have this lens on it actually because if you see that, it says Rotor Riot. Um, funny story about the lens on this one. So if we put that down, open this, you have just your usual stuff down here, your board to change the camera settings and plug all that stuff in. Yeah, straightforward, just like every other camera, I guess. But it is kind of funny. I haven't seen a run cam come in a box like this big one in a long time, actually. This is like a two and a half year old camera by now. Usually the cameras I get come in small boxes like that. Okay, let's start off with the Mr. Steel Edition. As you could see, it is fully encased. Um, it is very big and robust, and the lens is massive. So, right there, you get 14.8 grams, which is a lot for a camera, definitely a lot. Um, when we go over to a Micro Eagle, if you use this adapter, you're gonna be sitting around 13.2, so it is very similar. Um, if you have to put it in your apex, like me, you have to use this thing, which will put it out to 11.4, so that, I think that's three grams less. Let's get the actual eagle weight here. 9.7 grams, yeah, that's a lot lighter than this, 14.8. But, as you can see, it's a open backing with just this little shitty thing that doesn't do much. Um, if you weigh just the lenses, right here you can see the original lens. I don't know if you can see all those spider cracks in there. And then this is an eagle lens. So the eagle lens itself, way smaller. Let me take this cap off. Way smaller. Um, it weighs 4.7 grams. Um, and then when you put on this big lens, which is literally the exact same um, lens I could show you. Yeah, the RC25G. So that's a a lot more right there just in the lens okay here's the setup we got the eagle and we got the swift 2 um this is a cloudy day both of them and what i want you to do is i want you to take a look at the colors and the detail you got 60 seconds look at the sky and how grainy it is um try to see how far away you could see something in detail or how far away you could see something in general um, look at the overall color grade of the image. Did I already say look at the sky? If I didn't say look at the sky, for sure look at the sky. I mean, we're both looking at it. Um, obviously I'm not gonna tell you which camera is which until the end, but I just want you to make a decision which one you think you like better on a cloudy day. All right, we're coming up on the old 60 second mark. Uh, we're about to switch to a sunny day, the complete opposite, and we're gonna see how the cameras react. The complete opposite all right and let's switch right now okay look at the difference okay I want to point out B for a second because first of all look at the sky all right and look at the sheer amount of detail that B is giving okay and you look at these trees right now and a it really isn't that sharp it's very like washed watery kind of um, and it's always been like that but once again, just see how far away you could see something in detail um, and look at the color grade of the picture now. Also, don't forget about the exposure. All right. Look at when I go through those tubes. I'm a little late now. Okay. 
and how quickly it changes. And I want you to try to maybe go back and look at camera A and see how it did with exposure um, on a bright versus on a cloudy day. Um, because like I said, it's literally the opposite. I also wanna point out, do you see how white looking and like dull camera A looks? All right, it may not be a surprise to some of you guys, but A was obviously the Swift 2 Steel Edition and B was the CMOS higher contrast image being the Micro Eagle. But let's not get too hyped yet. Um, there's a lot of flaws with both of these cameras and I'm about to point them out. These are things people never really seem to bring up. Oh my God! Okay, starting off with the Steel Cam. Um, there are two major flaws to this camera and right now you are looking at both of them combined. Okay, first of all, what people don't like to tell you, if you live in an area where you have seasons, like Ohio and the other half of the country, um, you don't just have the normal color spectrum on the camera of greens and browns, okay? You have reds and these reds on this steel cam are the absolute worst anything to look at it is the absolute worst thing to look at by far it literally blinds you it's so much worse in the goggles than you can actually see in this and i think that is completely unacceptable because it doesn't allow me to fly anymore the other major flaw being the overall blurriness and not sharp image that i like so much with the micro eagle all right, this clip is me ripping balls with the steel cam, all right? And I want you to take a look at the exposure. Like when you, I just did that flip and you could see that white flash, which Micro Eagle is famous for, although this is the, the Swift. But look how white it is up there, all right? And then you come back down, I'll give it to you. It has insane ability to just feel locked. Like the camera feels like it's never going to change on you. It feels very nice. And it almost always allows me to see what I need to see. All right, I know I didn't really talk about the Rotorite Swift run cam, whatever you want to call that thing. Um, because honestly, I'm just going to be straight up. It is so much worse than both of these cameras. You could see the reds. They are very bright as well, but it's overall just a way worse image quality with that camera. So I'm not even going to try to do anything with it. All right. The flaw of the Eagle. There are a couple flaws of the Eagle. Um, one is flying in snow. You can't do it. You cannot get close to the ground. Uh, you just don't have any depth perception. All right. And although the eagle does very well as you'll see once you get up it's not like blinding or anything and it's not in your face but compared to but compared to the swift it is a lot worse in that perspective of snow all right another major flaw of the eagle when it is super cloudy it does this absurd purple looking like pixelation uh, i don't even know what you want to call it it's just awful and it actually messes you up that's two types of environments where the eagle fails for me but it makes up in stuff like this look at me i'm flying at nighttime mr steel no no nighttime that's not gonna happen all right this sensor is so much larger, it can pick up so much more light, and you could fly at night. I mean, you'll see, I start to rip around this thing like it's nothing. And I put on the steel camera at night, I literally couldn't fly, f fly anywhere. It's not even worth throwing the camera on and wasting a trip out to see if the freaking Swift will work because it won't. All right, while we're on the Eagle, I'm going to say the positives and the negatives. First, in the goggles themselves, the contrast and the brightness is super easy to set. I don't ever have a single issue with finding the correct look for the camera, all right? Let's start off with some negatives. First of all, the Micro Eagle whiteouts. I have had so many of these in the past and caused so many crashes, it's insane. In my one crash video, you could see I've even labeled all of them because I was so pissed that it continues to happen. Second, it is was an exp semi-expensive camera, but it is no longer for sale. Fortunately for me, I have five of them. And if you have one too, and you think about switching or trying to get off of it uh, like I am, I'm still going to have to keep looking. Another flaw of the Eagle is it has an open back casing, which 
actually has caused two of my cameras in the past to become fatal. Um, one knocking off a capacitor and one just getting wet before I put conformal coating on it before I did any of that and uh, caused it to die. When it's cloudy or super bright, like when there's snow, it is very bad. But here are the positives of the Micro Eagle. First of all, less color change when looking at the sun. Less flare and glare. That sound, I'm sorry. Possibly due to the special lens, it has like that ND filter looking thing. I'm not sure. Um, light to dark is way quicker, has higher detail and higher contrast. I can fly at night, it's more lightweight, more universal size, since for some reason it's gotta be a mini cam, Mr. Steel. I mean, I get it, it fits in your frame, but the mini, really? Um, the camera, in my opinion, is better tuned. It's very programmable to my liking and has a larger sensor. All great positives for me. All right, now we'll move on to the steel cam. Here are some negatives. First of all, it's very heavy. Um, it's a weird size, I already went over that. Um, color shift into the sun way too often. It throws you off, all right? It has more glare, uh, more exposure, it seems like. It looks a little more watery, and there's very bright reds. There's also not as much detail. Um, it's expensive, but not that bad. And overall, it has a worse sensor. I have only written down three positives to this camera. Um, first of all, it's fast. Like, uh, I could feel the latency. It's definitely barely a little bit better. Barely. And I'm telling you, I could feel very small changes all right um it has a full hard case which to some that's that's a lot better all right and the lenses are cheap i think i bought 15 of those lenses siati gave me the link for like 2.99 a piece all right and they aren't near as expensive as the swift as the eagle ones honestly the perfect scenario for the swift 2 is a cloudy day like you're seeing right here. It performs the absolute best. Honestly, debatably, I like it better than the Eagle on this specific environment. It is very, very good. But overall, in the general scheme of things, every single day is different. And for that, the Eagle is such a better convenience and it looks better the majority of the time. And I will stick to the Eagles until they all crash and burn. If somehow you're here, Please subscribe, man. Just please. You made it this far. Just click the button. Thank you. Have a good one.